What's going on guys? I hope you are doing well. In this video, I want to talk to you about a levels-based approach in trading. What the hell is it? And all that sort of stuff. Because a levels-based approach is going to be very, very helpful to you if you find the typical methods of trading a little bit more difficult, um, a little bit harder to get your head around, especially if you are newer. It's a very simple approach to trading. And often simplicity can be where all of the most important um, improvements come from. Because when you are focusing on keeping things simple, you can focus your attention on the much harder areas of trading, i.e. sticking to your plan, being able to sit through those losses when they come, being able to stay logical. These these things demand way more energy than finding the quote unquote magic perfect strategy because it just does not exist. Yes, some strategies are better than others, but if you focus on that, you will lose. Okay. And anybody who tells you that that is not the case, I personally disagree with them, but you know, each to their own, that's completely fair, but that's not the topic of this video. So levels based trading, what is it? What are we talking about? So first of all, let's talk about some theory. Let's just draw out some random zones on the chart. This has nothing to do with the uh, actual information over to the left here. This is just for a diagram purpose. Let's just say for whatever reason, we mark out our two levels like this. Now, typically when you're dealing with a direction focused approach, you know, the direction is going to be the most important element. Okay. When you are looking at price coming into a level like this, you are mostly interested in price breaking through it, coming down and then testing it or if you're, again, looking at it from a directional approach, you're looking at, okay, well, maybe price could reject here, come back down to this other level, and then I could look to buy around here. Well, the levels-based approach is a little different because you are not obsessed about the direction as much. You just want to mark out significant, clear levels. And so as the old um, formula goes, we have direction, levels, entry. Now, entry is kind of a separate entity, just because entry, I always say, is the least important. That's not to say it's not important. I know that when I say that, some people get really offended, which is fine. But um, what I mean is that if you are doing, if you're putting 90% of the work on the direction and the levels, that is basically the entire formula and framework for your strategy. And because it is the formula and framework for your strategy, then the entry is just confirming what that formula has already given you. If your direction levels have said, okay, it's bullish and we're at a really good level right now, all your entry is doing is just establishing, okay, what well, is that level holding? That's a really minute decision. And yes, you can get really technical with entries, but most of the work is typically done in the direction stage and in the level stage. And with the direction-based approach, most of the weight is put here on the direction side. With a levels-based approach, most or all of the uh, attention is placed on the level side. Surprise, surprise. Okay. And so what that means is it means that we need to understand what we are dealing with. And so specifically, what am I talking about? Well, regardless of the direction, the idea is, is look, if we have a level that we have marked out as significant, then all we really want is we want price to respect it. We want some kind of evidence that price is going to respect it. As simple as that. And so when we come in like this, for example, yes, the, nat the natural urge that most people are going to have is be like, okay, well, if I get in for a sell here after it confirms or whatever, we're then going to go down here. This is a mistake. And it's not always a mistake, but typically it is used as a mistake, I should say. Because when you focus on trading this way, you are ignoring all of the things that could potentially go wrong. You are not understanding where the edge with a levels-based approach is really coming from. Because typically, yes, sometimes it will do that. But a lot of the times, because you're not taking into account direction, you are going to be full victim to scenarios like this all the time. And then your target down here is just going to feel um, all isolated. Okay, That's not to say sometimes it doesn't come down here. Obviously, of course, sometimes it will. But typically, price will often come back down to this sort of level and it will go off or do something like this. And so for me, the best way that I like to use a levels-based approach is just to focus most of my attention on this high probability range. Now, a high probability range for me is just from the entry to that target where I think it's really likely to go, regardless of what it does after this point. After this point, it could go up, it could go down, then go up, it could go all the way down. does not matter. Because as long as I understand where that high probability area is, I have a few different options. I can partial here. I can go break even when price gets here. I can take all of my position out here. I can go break even and hold it down here, down here. I have more options. Because when you start focusing on targets, as the old saying goes, beginners focus on entries and professionals focus on targets, 
The reason for that is because when you focus on targets, you are focusing on areas where things could turn against you. And so by definition, you are being more of a money manager, which is essentially all this job is. It's not to be the best at technical analysis because te technical analysis is just a framework for you to apply risk management. It's really not special. It's not moving the markets, in my opinion. Um, and so when we understand that versus trying to focus on where the best entry is, because if you think about what you're trying to do in that scenario, you are trying to essentially control the market. You're trying to control the uncontrollable. You're trying to be the this incredible kind of like pioneer of, you know, oh, I can predict everything that happens. And, you know, I can control this magic, this incredibly complex um, market and ecosystem with all these players and participants just by drawing a few lines on the chart. That is not the game that we are playing here. And so this is why the saying goes, professionals focus on targets and beginners focus on entries. Okay. Again, that's not saying entries aren't important, but I hope you get the point there. So bottom line, okay, is high probability target or high probability range is going to be the most important thing for me. So that means that if I had, for whatever reason, a level down here, and I was looking at this for a buy because it is a level below price, okay, then it means that I'm not necessarily looking for price to come down here and then hit into here. It did in this case, and that's great. But what about all those other times where it doesn't do that? And so let's go through some example or an example or two um, of how to actually mark this out and what I typically look for. Okay, because it's really simple. As always with trading guys, you can make it as complex or as simple as you want really, because again, technical analysis is not where you're gonna find the answers that you're looking for. It's sexy to talk about technical analysis. You know, someone putting up a YouTube video saying that they've you know, made X amount in 10 minutes because of this magic pattern is obviously gonna get a ton of clicks because it's sexy to talk about that stuff. Who doesn't wanna draw lines and make money? But that is not what trading is guys. It's about managing risk and focusing on protecting your downside and just staying in the game. It's not about just chasing these crazy gains because that only comes as a byproduct of managing money effectively. But anyway, that's a whole other topic. I feel like I'm going on tangents. I apologize. So we come down here. So let's zoom in on this particular um, area over here. And let's go down one standard time frame. So we're on the daily time frame. Let's go down to the four hour. Now, once we have some kind of confirmation, because that's gonna be ideal for this type of approach, of course you can set limits if you would like, um, because it will almost guarantee better entries, but you will get chopped around a little bit more. But again, everything has its pros and cons. There's nothing wrong with using limits. You just need to be aware of what those pros and cons are. I've got plenty of videos on limit orders if you would like to learn more about what those are. Um, but at face value, let's just say we're waiting for confirmation. Now, confirmation is just another word for entry, pretty much, at least the way I like to think about it. And if you think about what an entry is, if we've already established that this is the level that we are looking at, at this point in, uh, at this point in time, when we're coming down here, we already know what our bias is. We know that we're looking for confirmation of a buy at this level. So if we're at this level, what we're looking for is confirmation. And confirmation can come in many forms. You can have candle patterns, you can have rejections, Basically, some all the different forms that rejection comes in is what we're focusing on. So you see here, we have a breakdown and a very strong break back in, okay? Break back in within the structure if you wanna be specific, but also just look at the size of the candles. This is a very typical breakout break back in. Alternatively, you can use candle structure, which is basically where you are comparing the close of the current candle to the high of the previous. And in this case, because essentially all we're doing with confirmation or entry, whatever you want to call it, is we're monitoring the change or the confirmation from bearish back to bullish, then we'd be monitoring the candle highs because when a candle high breaks, it would be the exact same effect as if we came down like this with structure and then we began breaking highs to the upside like this, okay? And so this would be the exact same thing as this scenario. The only difference here is we'd be using candle highs and lows rather than structural highs and lows. And so that happens right here after we get the close above this previous high right here. So from this point, this could be a bullish indication. But the bottom line is there's just so many different ways to do it. Even if you want to use a really aggressive uh, moving average ribbon, for example, just a crossover, you can see we very closely attached to price. The reason for that is because if we are on the daily, if that's where we framed the setup, and then we go down only one time frame. that's still very close to the main time frame. And so if I had a really loose 
setting, for example, I had uh, a 20 and a 50, you'll see that by the time it crosses back bullish, it's almost already reached that other zone, which is way out of a high probability range. And I'll mark out how to mark that out in just a second. Okay. And so the whole idea is to have it being quite aggressive if you are going to choose one time frame below to wait for your confirmation. And in this case, because I was using the daily and I went down one standard time frame below to the four hour, I want it to be close to the price. And you can see here, these settings aren't magic, by the way, guys. This is, you can just, this is just a tool to identify a change in momentum. It's not about, oh, if I use a, you know, an eight and a 26 EMA instead of an eight and a 24 EMA, it's going to change everything. That's just, that's a bad way to spend your time, trust me, because I've done that for such a long time in the past and it's not fun whatsoever and it just doesn't yield any results whatsoever so anyway so we get rid of that um whatever method you use ultimately it is some form or some tool where you can get some sort of confirmation once we have that we then want to look at okay well how where the hell are we going to go where are those high probability areas and the general rule of thumb is the further up you go, the further you travel in this direction, the less probable it's going to continue in that direction without either a significant pullback or a complete reversal. And when I say reversal, I mean within the context of this particular bullish move. Like this, I would say is a reversal in context of this particular move because it goes all the way up and then all the way back down. Um, and so what are we looking at? All we're looking at, all a high probability area is, is it's looking at, well, where are the potential levels we can look at? Or where are the potential levels where price is likely to reach? Now, of course, the highest likelihood, imagine that we are looking to, from this point onwards, we are getting a bullish indication. Of course, if we then mark out a level because we closed lower than this wick, if we mark that out, so basically from the close here, back up here, that's going to be the highest probability or one of the highest probability. If we went down to a lower time frame, I'm sure we could find one super close to price. But you have to be reasonable because yes, that's way more likely, but then it comes back to the old argument of, okay, well, are we having a one-to-one -one risk reward? Or are we going to have a negative risk reward? Because regardless of technical analysis, guys, if you have a negative risk reward like this, your win rate will be way, 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 way higher. And so it's the same argument here having this, it's the exact same thing versus having it a little bit bigger. It becomes less and less likely the further and further away you go because price doesn't move in straight lines, okay? And so you have to be reasonable. And so the easiest way that I like to do that is I like to look over to the left and I like to look at where are some key, where are some key levels for me? Now, there are tons of different ways to do this. This here, we have a wick with either side. This is basically just a pivot high, which basically just means you have a candle either side that's lower like this you can use imbalances you can use key levels it doesn't even have to be specific if you just want to use levels from the past if that just seems to make the most sense for you that's fine anybody that tells you no 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 it has to be this magic special way like they are they're, they've either been sold on a load of dogma that has very very little grounding in anything factual um or they just don't have the experience of doing it or something else many things it could be but there we go um so it could just be something like this very simple just loads of touches over here we then break through basically just the classic retest level there's lots of different ways to do it this is just a clear and obvious high to me because of the wick um then we could do the start of an imbalance level right here that could be another one um just doing balances all the way up if you want but the main thing is not the levels that you pick. The main thing is the understanding beneath it. Because typically what most people will do is they will focus on the surface stuff. Surface stuff is basically technicals. They'll be like, oh, this is the best setting for this indicator, or this is the best way to draw this level, and this is the best scenario for this level. But they have no, under no understanding or clear understanding of the meaning behind the surface. Because the surface is just that. It's a surface level thing. It's just a representation of your understanding of a deeper thing beneath it. And in this case, the understanding is regardless of how you've marked these levels out, the understanding is that the further up you go, it becomes less and less likely that it's going to hit each one of these levels. If we marked out levels all the way up to the top, it's just going to get gradually less and less likely that it's going to reach each one. And so it's up to you to figure out, okay, well, what sort of risk do I want to take? How, how important is win rate to me? 
What's that balance between win rate and profitability? Where do I want to hang in there? What are my goals? Am I trying to get funded? Am I trying to do this? Each of these things has a different type of thing that you can do. And it's not really complicated. It just involves you sitting down and calculating it out in your head or on some paper or journaling it and just figuring it out. But the idea behind a levels-based approach is just understanding this thing. It's just understanding, okay, well, how can I identify a high probability area? And then how can I begin to exploit it? Don't worry about entries until you've got this understanding down. So how do you mark out key levels? It doesn't matter. Even if you use support and resistance, I've spoken to traders who have been doing very well for far longer than most people on YouTube, myself included by a ridiculous amount. I'm talking multiple decades. And most of them just use support and resistance if they're for their technical side of things. And that comes as a shock to people, especially if you've just come from SMC and stuff like this and smart money. Um, but that's the reality. Don't get lost in the dogma. In other words, don't get lost in people saying it's us versus them. My way is the best way. Nothing else works. I love SMC. I love concepts from SMC, but I don't trade only SMC. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just aware that there are so many different things that work and spending all your time thinking that you have the best way and everybody else has the worst way is actually just a waste of your time. You just need to understand the basics and understand the meaning behind all of the, the technicals and how it works in relation to risk management. And that's it. And then just focus on the psychological side of things. So guys, I really hope that this has made sense. If you'd like to see step-by-step -step approach on how to do all of these things with all of the processes mapped out for you, journaling, self-review, um, all of the psychological side as well, as well as a strategy, multiple strategies actually, uh, and a community, then I would recommend checking out the links in the description. Or if you would like to join the analysis group, that is also in the description box as well. If you have any questions, as always, please do let me know in the comment section below as I try to answer as many as possible. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you very, very shortly.